we consider a special feature of lines called the slope. To motivate, okay, note, we have two ways to construct lines. I could pick any two points in the plane, connect the dots, extend, we have a line. Or I could pick any point in the plane, we're gonna draw our line through that point, but to specify the line, I need to tell you how much we incline through the point. Now, that measure of inclination is what we call the slope. If we have two points on the line, okay, any two points, say x1, y1, x2, y2, slope is defined as the rise over the run. So rise is given as the change in y, y2 minus y1. The run is the change in x, x2 minus x1. Okay, note the indices line up here. For the picture, okay, we draw a line, we draw our points, we put in the right triangle with legs parallel to the x and y axes. Then the rise, the change in y is the vertical leg, okay, the length of that. The run is the length of the horizontal leg. And then the slope is the ratio of those lengths. Now, for some examples, okay, we consider the line 2x plus y equal to 2 in standard form. I find the intercepts, so I'll set x equal to 0 and y equal 0. These give the points 0, 2, and 1, 0. I plot the points, I draw the line. If I compute the slope, what do we do? Okay, the change in y's, we have 2 minus 0. Change in x's, which go in the same order, 0 minus 1. So I'm going to have a 2 over a minus 1, which is a minus 2. Now, you'll note, when I have a slope negative, this is going to be typical. So the slant is going to be going in this direction. For another example, okay, we take the equation of the line in standard form, 2x minus y equals 2. I'll find the intercepts, so x equals 0 and y equals 0. We get the points 0 minus 2 and 1, 0. So we plot these. I compute the slope, so what do we have? We have minus 2 minus 0, 0 minus 1. That gives a minus 2 over a minus 1, which is a 2. So we have a slope of 2. This is going to be typical when we have a positive slope. So the inclination is going to be in that direction. We have two special cases. First, horizontal lines. So the equation here is the form y equals a constant. So let's pick y equals 2. No matter what we put in for x, we get y equals 2 out. So if I use x equal to 0 or 1, we get the points 0, 2, 1, 2. Plot those points in the xy plane, connect the dots, we get this horizontal line going through 2 on the y-axis. If we compute the slope, change in y is 2 minus 2, change in x is 0 minus 1, so I get 0 over minus 1, and the slope is 0. So for horizontal lines, the slope is 0, and vice versa. On the other hand, we have vertical lines. So here are the equations of the form x equals a constant. We try x equals minus 1. No matter what I put in for y, we get out x equal to minus 1. So I use y equal to 0 and 1. We get the points minus 1, 0, minus 1, 1. Plot the points in the xy plane, connect the dots. We get this vertical line, which cuts the x-axis at minus 1. Now if I compute the slope, change in y is 0 minus 1, change in x is minus 1, minus a minus 1, minus 1 plus 1, which is 0. So I have minus 1 over 0, and the slope is undefined. So whenever I have a vertical line, slope is undefined, and vice versa. Now, some interpretation. Okay, so connections between slope and geometry. First question is, in the slope formula, why do we always get the same answer when I pick any two points on the line? The answer is going to be similar triangles. So I'll pick two pairs of points on the line. I won't worry about the x's and y's. Instead, I'm interested in rise over run. So we draw those in. So I have two right triangles. Okay, we know they'll be similar, which means the ratio of S1 to S2 is the same as the ratio of R1 over R2. That's rise over run, which is what we're calling the slope. So we see that's always going to be equal for any two points picked off the line. Then, okay, 
we know a rule for getting points in our line if we know one point in the slope. Okay, if I have a point on the line, if I go to the right by d, then I'm gonna go up by m times d, where m is the slope. And that gets me another point on the line. Okay, note here, if d is negative, okay, when I say go to the right, we really mean go to the left. If md is negative, instead of going up, we go down. More qualitative properties of slope. If I have two lines that are parallel, okay, so that means our lines never intersect. Then we have that the slopes are equal. Okay, that's not too hard to see. If we look at the picture, we consider rise over run. Note, if I have slopes equal, then we have either parallel or we're looking at the same line. On the other hand, if we have the two lines are perpendicular, so they intersect in exactly one point, the angle of intersection is 90 degrees, then we'll have the product of the slopes is equal to minus one. Okay, another way to say that, M2 is equal to minus one over M1. Okay, and that's another way to test to see if our lines are perpendicular. Now note, we have special cases. Okay, so in the first case, we know for vertical lines, the slopes are undefined. Okay, but if they're both undefined, then we do have two vertical lines, and then they're parallel, or the same. If I have a horizontal line and a vertical line, slope of the horizontal line is zero, slope of the vertical line is equal to undefined, and it doesn't make sense to take the product here, so we have to separate that case out when we check for perpendicular. Now let's look at some examples. So we wanna check, okay, we're gonna have two lines. Are they parallel, perpendicular, or neither? Take the line L1 going through two, one, and one, three. L2 goes through two minus two and four minus one. Compute the first slope. So we have change in Y, three minus one, over change in X, one minus two. Gives me two over minus one, or a minus two. For L2, get the slope m2, that's gonna be, okay, change in y is minus one, minus a minus two. Change in x is four minus two, so I get a one over two, which is a half. Okay, I have a minus two and a half. If we take the product, we get a minus one. So that means these two lines are perpendicular. So if we plot these points, connect the dots, okay, we get something like this, and that checks our answer. Okay, so that looks like a 90 degree angle. Next example, consider the line through one, four, and three, six, and the line through zero, two, and minus two, zero. For the first slope, okay, change in y is six minus four, change in x is three minus one, so I get two over two, which is a one. For the second slope, change in y is zero minus two, change in x is minus two minus zero, so I get minus two over minus two, and we get a one again. So these have the same slope. If we plot the points, our lines look like this. So they're never intersecting, so I have parallel lines. Next example, consider the line through one, two, and zero, three, and the line through two, two, and minus one, one. Again, for the first slope, okay, we take change in y, which is three minus two, change in x is zero minus one. So I get a one over a minus one, slope is equal to minus one. For the second line, change in y is one minus two, Change in x is minus one, minus two. So I get a minus one over a minus three, or a one third. So here, slopes are not equal. Product of the slopes is not equal to minus one. So we have neither parallel or perpendicular. Final example, consider the line through one, two, and minus one, two, and the line through zero, three, and zero, six. For the first slope, Okay, we have two minus two over minus one minus one. That gives me zero over minus two, which is zero. Slope of zero means I have a horizontal line. For the second slope, we have six minus three over zero minus zero. Gives me three over zero. Slope is undefined, which means I have a vertical line. So I have a horizontal line and a vertical line. They intersect in exactly one point at a 90 degree angle. Okay, so here's our picture. See that our second line is just the y-axis.